What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. This is part three of the Pit My Tractor series. And well, as you can see, the shop is getting a little more full and it's about to be double stacked today. So we are a long ways from getting the old coyote here finished up. You can see the interior is still completely torn apart. We've got a bunch of exterior lighting that we still need to mount up there. Lights that are gonna go here, lights that are gonna go there and she's getting tinted today. So we're gonna be all over top of each other. It's gonna be a nightmare. Sergio's probably gonna be pissed. The tint guy's probably gonna be pissed. My poor planning and scheduling led to this. It's what it is. It, it might also be torn apart. Duh. Which is probably not. It's gonna be even more torn apart. Okay, okay. I figure these doors are fun, you know? We got all kinds of bolts and hinges and okay. yeah, yeah. That's why we call the professionals. <laughs> Now we're jumping back into putting side lights on and you guys brought up a good point. I had a whole shelf of rigid lighting just sitting over there. So we're gonna use the rigid, I think these are the SRSM Pros. These are uh, floodlights, they're white and they're small. I only have two of those, so the front ones are gonna be these and then the rears are going to be uh, the original ones that we had planned on using. I don't know where else I'm gonna use these, so this is kind of the perfect opportunity just to use them up. Sergio, are you excited for today? Yeah, man. I think you're, um using the most expensive lights on this truck. Try of all the stuff we've ever done, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but we are. It's the only ones that fit. For yeah, the most part. True. Sergio, we have to get this all done today. Oh, shit. You got this, right? We're gonna find out? We'll find out. What do we got here, some relays? Relays, yeah. We're gonna use the same original um, switches that you have here. Right. So they use low power, so you cannot go send all the power through them. So the relays will take care of that. We'll take the signal from these switches, send it all over to this relay. And these relays are gonna be connected to the fuse box. And this fuse box will be connected to our main power eight gauge wires, so. So basically what a relay does is instead of you relying on the wiring, you know, that's originally here, those thin wiring, to get, that's gonna go to the light. We're gonna use that wiring just to trigger the relay. Then what that does is it allows the thicker gauge wire power coming in to go through to a new wire that's gonna to go to the lights. Yeah, and everything is handled by the relay. So the relay is gonna be your, uh, that's gonna be your um, maximum current that you can There you go, handle. so a relay is just basically a switch. Yes. So all he's doing is that switch over there with the original wiring is just gonna trip the relay to say on. Then from there, power is gonna go through the appropriate gauge wire. Yeah, you'll find the relays everywhere. Like you can find them here. It helps um, use uh, small, smaller th uh, um, thickness wires sent over the harnesses and you can use as small as you want also the switches to be. Before you had to use big thick wires for everything and all the switches had to handle uh, a lot of current. Right. Them. So now we can use smaller wires, uh, thinner harnesses. Meanwhile, Richard's chugging along back here. So what do we go with, 35% right? 35 ceramic, keep the visibility but allow the film to do its job. So I'm not super big on like limo tent because I can't see at night ever. So all the guys that do it, I don't know how you guys survive with limo tent. Uh, if you've ever seen any of my vehicles, basically what I do is I go a hair lighter than factory on my front windows. Um, and being that the back windows are all dark and if you do the windshield kind of light, it ends up looking similar to where you can't really tell the difference. And you can still see at night and you can still see your mirrors. Sweet, I think it's the right amount of darkness. Not too bad. Nah, there you go, you guys can see the difference, it's clear, and there's what she looks like on the inside. But on the outside, looks decently dark. We still get that cool gangster look of the tractor. So the fuse box is going again inside of this panel, reason being it has the most space for it, there's a big empty panel, and it's only four bolts to remove it if we really need to get to it. Uh, there's just no room down here where the actual original fuse box is, so we had to improvise, but it's a pretty good spot for it. There's room. But the things we have to drill through here, which you don't want. Well, and you have to pull that panel off. And you have to pull the whole panel off. Yeah, so this is the easier, quicker panel to pull off. That's why we opted yeah. to put the new fuse block in there. So just going, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> he's got. So I'm staying out of the way, because Sergio, it's in his brain where this all goes. I'm just being useless today. <laughs> I bolted on lights, and then, uh, you know, there's only so much I can do. It's only a one-seater, Sergio. There's only room for you in there. Richard hasn't taught me how to tint yet. He doesn't uh, have his online tint course going, so all I can do is watch him. <laughs> you don't want to try. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. 
I contemplate every single day. <laughs> There's certain things you can DIY. I don't think tint is one of them. You, we've all seen the like Nissan Altima going down the road, bubbly as can be. Like you just don't want to try. And you gotta buy the quality stuff. Like everybody tries to cheap out and buy some cheap film, tries to put it on themselves, and it might look good for like a day. The better the film, normally easy it is to work with. So it's a win-win really. There you go. Got the big old door going on. All right, Sergio has turned that entire octopus spaghetti of wires into a nice clean setup. We got the fuse block there. All the wiring's good, all of the relays are there. We're ready to close it up? Uh, this side all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this side, we have access to everything else still. Uh, we forgot nothing, right? We got our wires back here. What is this? What is this extra wires right here? That's the reverse signal. Okay, sure we're good. All right, here it comes. Here we go. What? Yep. It's only one piece. 20 bolts. 20 bolts. There you go. Let's shift that to. Shit, hold on. Come all, 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 all the way up. Let's see how that shifter's connected. Uh, it's covered with the boot. Never mind. If it's silicone, no. That's <laughs> one thing I told you last night. I forgot. I was so busy. Look, we got silicone right here. We're gonna silicone the hole that's in the bottom. That way, no rats or nothing get in. Here you go, buddy. Great. Now let's dry again. This is huge, guys. This is huge. First panel going back in, that means we're making forward progress. We have to. <laughs> we're getting close to the deadline. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. I got, I got faith in us. Now that the command center of wiring is all completed and put back together, this mess now needs to commence. <laughs> we're running the main camera cable, which everything connects to right here, as well as wiring and all of the hookups from the three cameras. And then on the other end, we just have this side, which it's a pretty nice setup for that, other than now we're proprietary and we're kind of stuck using their <laughs> monitor. <laughs> However, it'll be nice that we just have one wire coming up here, whereas like most camera systems, every camera needs to get plugged into the back of the screen. So you'd have to hide this big mess somewhere up in the ceiling. Yeah, it's a long, long Yeah, so this will be easier. It helps. Okay, moving to the front, we gotta get the wires for the new uh, Dynamics lights that are gonna go up here. And we're gonna try to get through the same bolt hole attachment that the factory lighting went through. We tried to pull these wires through, but they are not budging. Oh, if I record it, it goes wrong? Yeah. No, 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 it's not gonna go wrong, Sergio. Oh, it's already going bad. <laughs> it's out, Sergio, I got it. I got it. You don't have to drill now? Nope. Right. Uh, it might just be another rubber cap. I don't think it's rubber. You don't think so? Nope. All right, we did it. Success. You see something? I don't see anything in there. Great. Yeah, we mangled a little bit of wires on the way in, but you know, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh. oh. He needs a bigger hole? Yeah. He already looped it up. Yeah, it's not going in. We need to make it bigger. <laughs> he's oh, gotta push harder. There you go, there you go. He's gotta push harder. Yeah, yeah. She's happy now. You gotta talk to her nicely. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> we'll rip that off. He's gonna be stuck, no? Oh, look at that. you ain't messing around. Oh. Once I'm in, I go all the way through. <laughs> and that's how we get demonetized, Sergio. Why? I'm talking about the wire. Oh yeah, yeah, we're talking about the wire. I'll hold your wire for you, so you can spit on it. <laughs> you hold it for me? Yeah, I got you. Now we're gonna... We gotta get this done today, Sergio. If it means holding your wire, I'll hold your wire. <laughs> you do whatever you need. Yeah, just close my eyes. If we don't make eye contact, it's cool. We can hold wires. Right. Well, now we're both holding your wire. You get three hands on your wire? Yeah, and then do it. It's impressive. Yeah. You got an impressive wire. <laughs> A little, a little skinny, but you know. Okay, you oh, cheese are good. You can, you can do it, baby. <laughs> tell her, tell her she's pretty. Yes. She's pretty. Oh, okay. Is it she or is it he? So hopefully, it's a she. <laughs> it's, not it's a little late to ask that question. <laughs> we probably should ask that earlier. We are in California, though, Sergio. So who knows? Yeah, maybe we're in the wrong, the wrong hole. <laughs> Front lights are mounted. Rear lights are all mounted. They look killer. We were able to get everything through the original factory holes, which is awesome. The only thing we had to go like up underneath the gasket for was these two little side lights. Um, and that's the gasket between the roof and the cab. Hopefully like no dust can get in through there. It's such a tiny hole and it's like a big foamy gasket. I think we'll be okay. Um, and then we had to go underneath to get the big wire in for the light bar going across the front. Aside from that, everything is inside. Sergio is now working on dialing everything in, getting everything buttoned up, hooking up the cameras, figuring out what cameras we want to go where. And well, now he's staring kind of blankly. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, you confused? <laughs> Just kidding. 
I just need one more wire. Uh oh. Where's my assistant? I fired him. Oh shit. <laughs> All right, we're not gonna finish it. Easy, Sergio. We gotta get it done. All right. What do you need? Just one, one more wire from here to. You want me to cut your wire? Down, what do you want orange? Oh yeah, we got the orange. Yeah, That's I, got what I, I brought it already. Yeah, yeah, I got it right here. Look, I'm, uh, on my back is your assistant. I'm gonna <laughs> get this out of here. You don't need this. No so more. this is ignition from your stereo. Okay, perfect. So if we connect this properly, we're done. We're put the hell on. Now the only switch we're gonna have to add is for these side lights because I want to be able to turn those on and off like independently. The fronts we're gonna have everything tied in together just to keep it simple. Uh, all three front lights will come on and same with the rear. All three rear lights will come on at the same time. Um, but we pulled out one of the blank covers where the switches are and I actually searched online the other day and I couldn't find any coyote, like exact coyote switches. So we can always do that later. But for now, um, the rocker switches that Sergio stocks would not fit. They were either too small and then when we put the housing around them, they were too big. Um, so it's not the most professional way to do it. However, we had to put just a little toggle switch inside of the blank. Um, and that'll be our switch for the side lights. And all four are gonna come on at the same time. I didn't really wanna independently make them side to side. It's just a ton more wiring. It's a big moment, y'all. Fuses are going in. Does that mean we're about to test? Um, do you have better to connect it? Oh, we never connected over here? Sergio, we can't get too far without uh, those being connected. All right, we're not, going, we're not going to test right now. Also, Richard had to run back to his shop. Uh, one of the guys had to take off early, so we got half the windows tinted. He'll be back tomorrow to tint the rest. And I know it doesn't look super, super dark. Here's a comparison. And once all of them are done, it'll all look darker because right now these are letting a lot of light in. Uh, but I don't want these things to be super dark at night. I cannot stand limo tinted windows. I cannot stand people that have eyebrows on their freaking windshields. I will never understand that. Maybe it's because I'm so tall that they're always in like the worst spot and I'm always like trying to look underneath them. That ain't the life for me. So moderate tint, it's enough to keep it cool inside and not, you know, burn your eyes with the sun. And I don't like feeling boxed in. I've been on skid steers with limo tint and you just feel like caged in and boxed in. I hate that. I bought a big tractor with big windows all the way around so I could feel like I'm out in the open. Sergio, do you feel like you're out in the open? No. No. And I'm inside of a warehouse. <laughs> Check out the perfect camera mount we found digging in Sergio's shop. This is just like a, some type of just random Chinese roll bar mount but it is like ideal to mount the camera up on the front. Nice and clean. It's a lot better than the hose clamps and rubber that I had originally planned on using. Uh, I think that looks really, really good. We'll just end up zip tying the camera lead down here. We left some slack. Well, we left a lot of slack, but we can tuck that under the hood because this bar does need to slide forward. I don't know if that's gonna need more wire or not, but it's better to have it um, than not have it up front. But look at that. That looks super pro. All right, we ran into our first issue. Sergio says this camera's not working. We had one that was bad and one that was good, and I thought I grabbed the good one. You thought wrong. And siliconed it on. No. <laughs> oh. Well, I siliconed the hole. I okay. could probably pull that out. I'd double-sided taped on, though. You didn't took the both sides, though, remember? I think I did. I think I pulled it back up. <laughs> Hopefully it's maybe the wire. Probably not the wire. Sergio's got the monitor hooked up uh, just to do some testing. It's oh, the wire. it's the wire? Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, look at that, looking good. Front camera is upside down, but we can, uh, you know, we can, oh no, wait. I don't know why. The screen's upside down. Yeah. Rear camera's upside down. Oh yeah, that's right. This is big. Headliner's getting installed. We got the camera issue figured out. It was just a bad cable. So we've had one bad camera, one bad cable. That's what you get when you buy Chinese stuff. Ooh. All right, find me the American system. <laughs> Y'all, we have been fighting the crap out of this stupid headliner. It's got these little clips that clip onto the metal up on the, the ceiling of this thing. But if you're not lined up perfectly, which none of these are lining up perfectly, they bend and then they don't go in. We fought two in the back for probably like 30 minutes. We finally got them, but it took forever. Sergio's up against the time crunch. I'm up against the time crunch. We're probably gonna have to finish this part in the morning. Sergio's leaving today though, so just having to put every body panel that he took off back on because he knows how they went and where the bolts are. I have no clue. And then we'll fight well, this stupid headliner in the morning. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> okay, we're calling it. That's it for the night. I'll mount that in the morning. We still gotta adjust the headliner a little bit. Um, that air duct is not lining up. I think the whole thing's just kind of kinked this way a little bit. We need to kink it that way. Uh, I'll be on my own tomorrow I'm trying to knock that out. We'll get the screen mounted. Some of those cameras need to get flipped upside down because that's the way it's supposed to show. That camera right there is upside down. The other ones are all looking pretty good. So we'll be back on this 
in the morning. Well, y'all, Sergio leaves for vacation and everything just goes south. Starting with, I somehow forgot my GoPro this morning. So I apologize that the rest of this video, well, not the rest of the video, but the rest of today is going to be on my cell phone. However, that is all I got. Good news is though, I did manage to fight the headliner and get it completely in place. All the air vents lined up now um, and all of the bolts went in. So thankful for that because that was like my biggest headache. Then I was missing, but was able to find the machine screws that go into the back of the screen, which means we can finally get this booger all hooked up and start adjusting the cameras to where we would like them. I don't remember which way is up and which way is down. Let's just guess. Oh, there's a power button there. Would that be on the top or the bottom? We're going to guess. I'm also missing, there's a piece that goes on the back that allows you to tighten this where you want it. I gotta dig around the shop to find that, otherwise this thing just keeps falling. Found this piece, thank God. When I work on stuff, it kinda becomes an absolute mess. And well, you know, the tractor is no exception. So anytime we can find something, that's a big achievement. We've got a 50-50 shot. Let's see how we did. Look at that, nailed it. Got it right the first time. We'll tuck the cables and stuff up in a little bit. Oh yeah. I gotta say guys, that is probably, again, I won't know until we get out to the ranch and we use it, but like that placement is pretty nice right there. So again, um, it looks like that front camera is pretty good. We could tweak it a little bit, but like when we go to use the forks, we'll just double tap that and boom. Now we got a big image of the forks. And then I know one of these rear ones, oh, the back window is open. Let's close the back window. There we go. Now we can see out the back. We'll probably end up using the upper one as a backup camera, and then the lower one as the implement camera. However, it is currently upside down, so I'm gonna go flip that around right. And then it is set to when this thing gets put in reverse, that one comes up. So we gotta flip flop those. It's a cool little setup. You know, it's not too big of a screen. It's not too glaring or in your face. You still retain a giant windshield of visibility. I'm pretty excited for it. All right, rear camera is flipped. You can see now up on the monitor, we are in the right orientation. There we go. We can adjust this down to shine on the implement or at least shine on all the connections. Again, once we get out to the ranch, we'll know exactly where things need to be. Uh, that one gets a little wonky when the window's up. So we'll put the window back down and well, there we are. Look at this y'all. Cameras double as surveillance watching Richard. He's back doing the last two windows. Well, three actually, one, two. And then the big old monster has to get done. I'm telling you guys, doesn't look that great filming the screen, but these cameras are pretty impressive quality. I mean, you can see all the dirt and dust on those little hydraulic hoses. I'm pretty, pretty impressed. Got a little bit of adjusting on that roof one. I think it's a little bit sideways when you get it back to straight. Those are a pain in the butt to adjust, but everything else is looking pretty good. I am gonna paint the fork tips red. That way uh, you can see those even better. And we'll probably have to adjust this camera a little bit more, but if the golf cart was not there, you would see the actual fork tips. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't change much. But it's, it's tough not being out in the sunlight. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, so we've made a decision that's probably gonna piss a lot of people off, but I decided to not go as dark as I did on the sides, which isn't even that dark, it's 35%. However, I don't like feeling boxed in and super dark. So we went 70% on the windshield, which is gonna block just as much heat, but a little less light, right? Is that how that works? Just about, yeah. All right, there we go. So I don't want it to be too, too dark. We're gonna use this at night. I know I put, you know, the sun on the top there to be able to see at night. However, uh, if this is too dark, we're just gonna be screwed in that odd chance. So I'd rather go lighter now. We can always go darker later, but we'll see how this looks. Uh, it's not a huge difference. You can see from the glass there to there, but being that all of these are now darker, it should be a huge difference from the fishbowl that it was. Meanwhile, outside, we've got the 6.0. She's getting a backup camera put in her right now because I'm sick of trying to hook up to trailers without one. Um, you know, I've become that person. And then she's getting power door locks. Uh, big upgrades, big upgrades coming. Upgrades everywhere. The parking lot's getting upgraded right now. We got the street sweeper right there. We got the tailgate handle with the integrated camera now. Oof. 6 has been needing this. And we got a lot of gas, a lot of gasoline. I'm surprised the tweakers haven't tried to take that yet. All right, guys, she is all wrapped up. The front doesn't look too much lighter than the sides, considering when you have dark sides, it kind of darkens everything up inside, but it's looking pretty good. I am very, very happy with how this turned out. I think it's gonna be one of my favorite modifications we did by tinting her. Uh, I'm excited to see it outside again. Obviously it's darker inside the shop, 
um, but like I said earlier, I don't want it too dark. Um, you know, I got no problem wearing sunglasses while I'm in here. However, at night, you can't just make it brighter. I'd rather wear sunglasses to make it darker during the day than hate using this thing at night. And here's a little side comparison and everything's lighter on camera, just kind of keep that in mind. But there's a side comparison between the 35 and the 70. I know it looks like there's no 70 because you're seeing the color on the wall, but in person they look very, very similar in color. The camera's just kind of picking it up different. And there's me, hello. The main reason, well, one of the main reasons I wanted to tint this is hopefully to keep any glare off the screen. We can get like an anti-glare cover that goes over it if need be, but I think we're gonna be a okay well this morning i pretty much got most of the stuff done on the tractor and then the rest of the day has just been let these guys do their work so a uh, huge thank you to richard for getting all the tint done it's a pretty big thing to tint i mean those windows are huge this thing just looks so much better tinted and then you all are gonna laugh at me for this one but let me show you the backup camera system and everything on the 60 i have no idea what brand this is this was just lying around at sergio's shop so we figured we'd put it to good use it is a <laughs> I don't even know why he had this. However, again, it was just lying around in the shop. So whatever, you know, she works. We've got, look at that, backup camera. We can see the hitch. It's a little off center because that's how it's just designed in that tailgate handle. But being able to see the hitch is, oh, yep. I'm, I'm excited for that. The other cool thing is, check that out. You probably heard it when I just put this thing into park. We now have power locks. Oh, hold on. There we go. Power locks. This thing never had power door locks. I mean, it's as stripped as stripped gets on these things. We could, we could add power windows and all that too. Maybe at some point I'll do that, but this will be a huge one. I'm sick of having to do that and reach back for the doors and all that. I absolutely hate filming on my phone, so I just quit yesterday. <laughs> but you saw the gist of the progress we made. We have picked up the Crew Cab OBS. I'm going to be taking that back to the shop. I actually got Eli from Innovating Battery Solutions bringing me two new batteries for this thing uh, so we don't have to jump start it. And then we've got some speakers that showed up. We'll be putting these in the tractor today as well and getting the tractor loaded up and she is going back to the ranch. We've got the OBS unchained. Sad thing is, I mean, obviously we can't unload it till we can start it, but I can't even put the ramps down because my genius idea was to back it up basically over top of where the ramps need to swing open. So uh, she needs to get pulled forward before we can put the ramps down. However, that's just gonna give us time to install these new speakers in the old Coyote, which is looking super killer with the tint on there now. Now you'll see inside the cab, all she has is just two four inch speakers. We're not adding any more, I don't need any more. Um, I mean, we probably could add some more, but this is good enough for now. Really, I just listen to like podcasts while I'm in this thing. Not really bumping music. Um, however, there's a lot of room. We could probably even put a subwoofer in this thing if we wanted to, like really jam out. But for now, we are just upgrading to some Kenwood. What do we got? Sport Series 4-inch two-ways. I believe the ones that are in here are not two-ways. So two-ways have like the little tweeter built in. I believe that's the difference. I think something like that. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's got to be better than what's in here. So let's pull those out now and slap these boogers in. Now, I know nothing about the Kenwood Sport Series. This is probably like the Walmart uh, line that they offer or something. I don't know. They were super cheap. They were like 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. So that's why I bought them. Let's pull this one out. There's our little comparison. This is a uh, star. All right, that's quality right there. To the Kenwood, obviously this one's much heavier than the magnet on this one. Uh, but of course they have a stupid proprietary little plug on the end there so we're gonna have to cut that off and put new connectors on okay got one speaker installed i don't know if i can really do a comparison i mean it's not a huge huge difference um but i don't know if we can do a comparison without getting all like copyright striked the volume up there's coyote speaker over to kenwood oh we interrupt this uh stereo install we I see the man, the myth, the legend himself. Dun, 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 dun. What's up, Mike? What's up, G? I was trying to calculate in my head. I've got to have at least spent like five Gs with you in batteries over the last couple of years because yeah. of my irresponsibility with batteries. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm sure you love it. 
Keep calling me. There you go. <laughs> Eli Innovating Battery Solutions, mobile battery delivery, which makes my life so much easier than trying to fit this into like an AutoZone parking lot because that, yeah, that's yeah. no fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Mobile's the way to go. Yeah, I'll come out to you. There you go. There you go. A quick out with the old. Let's see if we can left hand this. In with the new. Tighten her back down. Okay, y'all, let's see if she fires up with her new batteries. Come on, old girl. There she is. There she is. Oh, we're gonna clear it. Oh, yeah. Just barely. Alrighty, speakers are done. Both Kenwoods are in. Sounds a lot better again. It's not gonna be a giant improvement because we just kept the two four inch speakers. I feel like maybe, maybe we'll add two more fours like right above you because these are so far forward. Um, I believe there's plenty of room up underneath the headliner to stack two more fours there just to kind of get sound coming over top of you. Now I'm gonna get the interior cleaned out. We're gonna pull this thing outside for the first time in a while and we're gonna give her a good bath even though she's pretty clean, but you know, and she's gonna get dirty as soon as she goes back out to the ranch. But I feel like, you know, we got a lot of metal shavings and stuff on here that I don't wanna just be sitting on here and they get moisture on them and they start to rust and they stain the plastic or anything like that. Here is what she looks like with all of the lights on. These things are super bright. I might have screwed up by putting that one right at eye level when you're standing outside of it. Good Lord, that light is so bright. Uh, again, we got the two pods up there. Those are more flood. These are driving lights, so this should be kind of a combo spot flood. Should probably do like super, super flood on the back, but uh, we can always swap the lenses out on the diode dynamic stuff. On the sides, we've got that side light and then the rigid side lighting. And again, we'll have to adjust these once we get out to the ranch to see what we like. If these even are like good, they might suck. That's why I put those on a completely separate switch. And then of course, our super, super bright front lighting, which is, oof. This stuff hurts to look at. It is so bright. I mean, look at, look at how bright it is lighting all that up. It's daytime, doors open, lights are on, skylights lit up. Like, this is gonna be some serious lighting. I'm excited to get this out to the ranch. Oh, dude, these are right at freaking eye level too, getting in. Speakers are sounding good. Let's get this thing backed outside so we can spray her off. And again, when we put it in reverse, it automatically goes to the reverse camera and then it takes a second before it goes back. But let's see, let's tell you how quickly it switches when we go to reverse, reverse almost instant to that camera. It's about to be the first time out in the full sun as well. We'll get a good taste for uh, how the 35% tint actually is, because all I've seen it so far is just in the shop. I gotta say, it is very bright out today, and I'm comfortable in this thing with no sunglasses on, which is rare, because I got very, very sensitive eyes. And that's good, that's a huge win. I was a little bit worried about going 35, but I'm very happy with that. Are foam cannon videos still a thing? I feel like nowadays, like now that everybody owns a foam cannon, it's not as exciting anymore. I still enjoy it. I still think it looks cool foaming something up. I figured now's as good a time as any. While well, she's brand new, we got a brander. We got to throw some big XL Workport decals on. You guys can also order these if you want, workfortapparel.com. We've got all sizes, including these massive ones. We're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming because she's a little bit big for the way these loader arms are shaped. And then we kind of had to trim around the little uh, serial number plate, but I think it looks pretty sick. These decals are loud. Went back and forth between the black and gray because we also offer this in a black and gray instead of the full color. I don't know what I like better at this point. The red does kind of match the coyote a little bit. Decals are on. Gave the old 6 just a quick little rinse off as well. It is time to get her loaded up though. It is finally, well, not fully dark outside, but dark enough that 
we can get an idea of these lights and we can actually still film. Um, we're upstairs doing work for it orders and I'll be damned if one of the neighbors backed into the freaking corner of my trailer. I mean, how you miss, and it was bright out. This is like, this happened probably 30, 45 minutes ago when the sun was still out. How you miss a giant orange tractor on trailer, I don't know, but uh, him and the rest of his employees, it's Friday today. We're out drinking out in front of the uh, their establishment and then the dummy backs into my trailer, moves the whole truck and trailer. I come running outside and he books it. So uh, we'll be talking to the owner of that company come Monday morning. Morning. I already left him a very uh, not so happy voicemail and uh, we'll see how they how they handle that however uh, doesn't appear to be any damage on the trailer they hit right here we have it on camera but regardless though you don't run I would a man would come over knock on my door and be like yo dude I screwed up we come outside and be like oh there's no damage don't worry about it but when you run mm -mm, that changes things let's turn on some lights and see what these look like I wanted to make sure that we at least saw them outside in this video and then the next video will be at the ranch testing every single feature. All right, looking forward. Oh, <laughs> it's like the sun right there. And then let's look out the rear through the tinted windows. Oh yeah, that's the lighting we've been needing. Look at that. Jeez, that's gonna be so nice. And then last but not least, our side lights. All right, all right. They're not super, super bright. That's pretty dang good here. Let me turn the, all the lights off. Let's just do the side ones. I think we're pretty solid there. Now we got to trailer this old setup home. The truck needs fuel. The tractor needs fuel. That's going to be an expensive fuel stop. Uh, somebody told me I should lock the doors on this thing because they're known for flying open while traveling. And well... Uh, but with that we are going to wrap up as always thank you guys so much for watching i gotta give a huge shout out to sergio sergio absolutely kicked buck on this project for me showing up and being like yo dude i got this you know there's just a little minor thing we got to do and it ended up taking dang near uh four days because sergio still had to go back to his shop run and manage his shop as well as work there in between running back over to my shop and uh yeah so huge thank you to Sergio for always busting his butt on my crazy ideas and making them come to life and doing it properly and well. If you guys would, please give this video a like, a thumbs up. Check out Sergio's business, iep-usa.com. That's where you can buy all the lights that you saw in this video um, and a bunch of other accessories and all kinds of cool stuff or bring your stuff to Sergio and he'll install it for you. Uh, also, if you guys can check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.